Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com here with the historic event. Historic event I know has had two of the Soul Sister pieces. And Soul Sisters, I have to give credit for really start, not really starting this channel, but really solidifying this channel. For those of you that might be new to my Rogue Deck Builder channel, I made a pro tour with the Soul Sisters in Modern. And it did. It just really catapulted my self-esteem as a creator, as a player, uh, as well as gave me a lot of content that grew the channel. So I will always be... Uh, really thankful and grateful for the soul sisters archetype uh so when i saw that there was two of the pieces and we have a johnny's pride mate right now in standard i thought i'd go ahead and build a historic sisters because the soul warden is available now on mt Drina, and so is sarah ascendant so here's the deck i came up with i'm sure this deck could use some um tinkering around with but i went five and one with the deck so completed the the Historic event in six games. I only lost to a Thought Erasure deck that had kind of a slow hand and couldn't find an answer for uh, the one of their, their their Thief of Sanity, and it just got out of control. However, the rest of the matchups was able to beat all blue. They were all blue tempo decks. Every deck I played against was a blue, either controlish or tempo-based deck. Most of them were tempo-based strategies. There was a blue, mono-blue flash, a blue-green flash, a uh, Jess Guy uh, tempo strategy, and there was a couple other, what were the other blue? Oh, oh, there was an Arclight Phoenix deck, so a blue tempo deck. And I can't remember the other fifth one that I, I beat. But anyway, uh, so Soul Sisters can't hang in there with what I would consider is one of the harder matchups because the typically blue tempo is something that can keep you in check and uh, can go over the top of you eventually. But this deck performed insanely well versus those because it was just the residual Castle Arden Veils and the Allegiant Landings that just continue to get me more either chump blockers or uh, ag aggression. Uh, there was a, a deck that had time wipes and deafening clarions, and it li literally was a flipped Legion landing that continued to apply pressure and won the game. So, yeah, that was the other strategy I played against as far as invention. So there, there were the matchups. So here's a list that I have with the Historic Sisters. So first of all, if you've never seen Soul Sisters before, you can go back and check my channel. I have so many videos from modern Soul Sisters. I try to play it like once a year just to, to keep up on modern. I, I do not like the modern format. I think it's just it's just too degenerate for my liking not a big fan of linear strategies or all in combo decks and i think that the modern format is just riddled with that so i took a i bowed out of modern a few years ago i was quite public with that to some people's uh getting upset that i quit playing modern because modern used to be my bread and butter i like i said it, it made a pro tour i made a pro tour with modern but it just became i mean too degenerate for for my taste so it, playing soul 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 warden uh, into a giant's pride mate is probably the best thing you can do in the modern format uh, or excuse me, in the Soul Sisters format. So what Soul Warden does is whenever another creature enters the battlefield, you gain a life. Johnny's Primate says whenever you gain a life, you put a plus one's counter on a Johnny's Primate. Soul Warden also triggers off your opponent's cards. So if you get a turn two of Johnny's Primate, it becomes a 3-3. Three, three. If your opponent then casts a creature, it becomes a 4-4. Four, four. Johnny's Primate is going to get out of hand. I think that's what Johnny's Primate has been missing in Standard, is we've had these like wannabe Soul Sisters in the form of like Impassioned Orator. This card's actually quite weak because it only triggers off of cards entering the battlefield under your control. It does not trigger off of your, your opponent's control. So this is probably the weakest card in the deck. I might end up cutting the Impassioned Orator for stuff like Tide Takers, because Tide Takers do seem to be more <clears throat> excuse me, useful in this format, because if they do get board wiped, they bring back a 1-1 Flyer, and then at least gives you some residual uh, aggression after that. I also might just put in the, the instead of Tide Taker, just the one that leaves back a 1-1 one, one lifelink soldier when it dies. Uh, so that's just a one drop that also can synergize with this sort of strategy and get the uh, Legion's Landing flipped. Another card is, that I could put in the slot of Impassioned Orator is Venery Loxodon, just to give an, a, a boost to all the creatures. But I thought I'd put this in here as the other honorary Soul Sister because it does still work with the overall life gain theme. So that is what Soul Sisters really is. In the modern deck, there's two of these. There's Soul Warden and Soul Attendant, and they both work with the Giant's Pride Mate. And then your other card is Sarah Ascendant. As soon as you get up to 30 life, Sarah Ascendant becomes a 6-6 Flying Life Linker. So this is a one drop that basically is a 5 mana spell. I mean, you can, it's very comparable with Lyra Dawnbreaker at that point. So if you can get up to 30 life, it's a one drop that you can also tutor up uh, with the Militia bu uh, Bugler. 
So Malicious Bugler is playing a role that Ranger of Eos plays in the modern format. So I've tried to make it as close as possible of what I play in modern. So let's just go down the list. One of the, the best cards in the deck is Legion's Landing because it creates that 1-1 lifelink vampire, which is going to give you some life gain to get you up to that 30 life for Sarah Sinnott, the 35 life for Johnny's uh, Strength of Pride, or just give you counters on the Johnny's Pride main. Uh, if it does flip, though, it also gives you that residual aggression to continue to put pressure on your opponent. Next up is Loon and Vanguard. This is kind of a weak card, but we are trying to flood the board. We are trying to get as many creatures out, and this is also something that does have some good synergy with the Giant's Pride Mate. I'm not sure if this wants to be a different card in the format. I mean, there's plenty of options to play here. We're still looking at the list. I'm still trying to figure out what other people are playing, but this is a good option for this current historic uh, format with just gaining that life and also having a a aggressive one drop. Uh, then we have the Charming Prince. This card's pretty good because of the, the life gain that it does. Just three life for two mana and leaves back a 2-2. Two, two. The Scry 2 is also very relevant and the excellent other target creature in return to the battlefield is also relevant with the Militia Bugler and the Hanged Executioner. So you do have that option for the kind of flicker effect for the Char Charming Prince. Um, next up is the Hanged Executioner. Hanged Executioner is our only removal in the deck. It's the best two for one because you're going to leave back a 1-1 one, one flyer. So if you have a Soul Warden out, you're going to gain two life off of this. And this is where Venery locks in on might come in handy over the Impassioned Orator. But I mean, this does also trigger off the Impassioned Orator. And then the best card in the deck, in my opinion, is Militia Bugler. This is going to dig you for those Sarah Sentence, the Johnny's Primates. They hit both of those. The only It hits everything in your deck, actually. So you do not miss with any of these cards. They're all two power. I had like Bindlish Marshall in here at first, and I'm cutting it uh, because the Bugler just seemed better in this slot. Uh, once we go back to like Amonkhet, I think Oketra's Monument gets really neat with this particular uh, archetype. And we actually get the other cat that gives uh, plus one plus one all cats and lifelink. I think we could make like a cat tribal at that point. They'll work a little bit better than this particular strategy. Um, and then we can cut down a few of the, the, the cards like the Passion Orators and whatnot. But that we'll have to wait till Amakid actually gets programmed in. Uh, last but not least is the Johnny Strength of Pride. I probably should go up to four of these, but then it gets kind of weird with the, the count of lands because right now we're just running 20 lands and that's ideal. But this is our, our board wipe. So if you have 15 or more life, then you're starting life total. You can exile it and get rid of all artifacts and creatures your opponent's control. So if you are playing against like other creature-based decks and it becomes a, you have to play more of the defensive route, gaining life, you know, you know, chump blocking uh, until a Johnny Strength of Pride comes out, you can board wipe them. If not, this is a pretty good card versus control because it just continues to create a Johnny's Pride mates to have a lot of synergy. Uh, then we're just going to run 14 planes and four castle Arden Veils. I'm wondering if I should go into uh, the uh, card. If you have the city's blessing, you can draw a card. That seems okay. Um, but right now, that's all I'm really, really going for. I guess we could even go memorial. Uh, we could go memorial to glory just to create some some human creatures. If our soldier creature tokens, if uh, uh, we really start to flood out. But just 14 planes and four castle Arden Vales seems to do the job. So anyway, that's the deck list. Let's go ahead and play, even though we've you know, done everything we can in this event and see if we can continue our win streak. So again, I was five and one with this deck all against blue temples. I'd like to see how, how it fares versus, you know, not blue tempo decks. Um, oops, I actually didn't even, I just wanted to click on my screen there and click, click keep, but I mean, this is an ideal hand. We have soul warden into, um, a giant's primate. So once again, another blue deck seems like it's all blue decks. I'm sure Oko does very good in this format too. Uh, we have another Giants Primate, so we'll just we'll just lead off here with the Giants Primate, and nope, no brazen. Oh yeah, so no one summon for the Soul Warden here, and we already have a three three on turn two, which is pretty good. So there is the ideal starting play with Soul Sisters. Then we have opponent probably has a Deferi here, I'd assume. Coming down, which is problematic for us because Oko. Okay, so Oko is not good here. Oko is pretty bad. So we'll just kill Oko. I wonder if I wonder if opponent just turns. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Oko still dies here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Soul Warden and a Johnny's Pride Mate, which we have another four four, and then we'll kill Oko. Kind of just want to like aggro in because there could be time wipes in my opponent's deck. But I mean, Oko just kind of 
buffed up our, our Johnny's Pride Man. I mean, it's not going to get out of control, but it's a 4-4. Four, four. <clears throat> now, we do have to worry about Time Wipe next turn, so I don't know if I... I ideally, I want to draw a land here. Opponent's just going to scoop. So it's just too aggressive. I, if my creature's a, if my opponent was a creature's base deck, all they're doing at that point is... Uh, what could they throw out? I think they need another green source, possibly. I don't... This almost feels like it's a Fire's Invention deck without Castle. I don't know. We don't know what this person was playing, but... I mean, a turn three Oko uh, just... got beat down and you saw the kind of the ideal draw of the soul sister uh, soul warden into a giant's primate gave us trips on the giant's primate that was a nice you arena so also going back to Amonkhet, i think the the aftermath card would be pretty decent this is, actually seems like an okay hand we have two castle arden veils uh we also have the leonin vanguard and the sarah ascendant so the better play is to start off with the Hmm, now Legion Landing feels like, I think it's actually Lone and Vanguard because this gives us the best oomph next turn. It's going to get shocked. No, it does not get shocked. So we're going up as a mountain, which is exactly what Soul Sister wants to go against. Um, Feather could be a problem. Feather absolutely could be a problem for us because if they, they're running like removal. So let's go another Leon and Vanguard. And I think just a Saris and it's fine here. And I will attack in, because my opponent's not going to make it into trade. So 22, the Feather is still a life or damage dealing deck. Um, they're going to, if they have Feather, this could be a tough one to come back from. If they don't, though, they do have Feather. Ooh, this one's going to be tough. Another Castle, Castle Ardenville is okay. I can get the Legion's Landing. I think we're just going Militia Bugler. And unfortunately, there's both of our Leonins. So we could easily lose this this one because I'm not going to get my Sarah Senate up in time. We need a Soul Warden here. And then Feather, Feather's just, this deck is so Feather dependent. If they don't have a Feather, they're very, very weak because they're, the, all of their, their spells end up just being. Yeah, okay, I'm okay with this. So I can chump block with Militia Bugler. But, I mean, this 10th Legion guide is going to get huge. Danto Vanguard. We don't care about that. Attack with Feather. Come on. You know you want to. Opponent does not attack with Feather. That was pretty smart, actually. All right. So, Soul Warden was a very, very good draw here because it's going to allow us to gain some life. And now we can just kind of flood out with everything don't know if we quite get there with the life no we're gonna be one off no we're, we are gonna be there we are gonna get there so opponent needs a shock for this sarah send it in all honesty opponent should have shocked the soul warden yep we're there so we got the Saracen up to a 6-6. Six, six. And we might actually win this. So then we can attack in with this Sarah Ascendant. This is kind of weird if my opponent has a shock, though. If my opponent has a shock, it goes down to a 1-1. One, one. And then we're in trouble. I think it's worth it, though. So just going to pump up that 10th Legion District. Thing is, I'm going to go up to 36 now. Which really puts me ahead. And we have a chump blocker for the 10th District. Opponent's going to continue. So before, yeah, because they scry to the bottom, so they want to scry a significant card. Um, they need the, the removal spell, the... Uh, one out of Ixalan, where it does four damage to a creature and two damage to one of your creatures. But 10th District Legionnaire is not going to be significant unless they can put a, a double strike on it, double strike trample. So 
So God's willing to get in for some damage. That'll put me below. E. All right. Well, we might be in trouble from that God's willing. Decided not to do anything, huh? So God's willing and Samut sprint plus another one could kill the Sarah ascendants. Going up to 40, though. So block one of them. Block another here. So we let's see. So do they have enough blocks? They can block here and block there. That's not quite lethal. So I want the Legion's Landing to flip for sure. So I think we might as well get in with everything. Except the Soul Warden. I don't want the Soul Warden to get chump blocked. But yeah, I don't care about le losing a le uh, Leon and Vanguard now though. So I want this Legion landing to flip. Unfortunately, we don't have another land to start getting the Adanto. So Sarah's is in it. That's going to get God's willing. Oh, I should have gone with Soul Warden. Whoops. Yeah, Soul Warden would have been lethal. My bad. So I was one off because... Block, block, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Whoops. Allow my opponent to come back. <laughs> That's no good. However, I, I don't know if my opponent can come back from this loss of life. So some new sprint on a Dante Vanguard would be the best, yeah, would be the best uh, play because it can kill the Militia Bugler. Keep a card on top, huh? So yeah, I messed up here. We had the win. And I calculated that wrong. But it's still going to take a lot to come back. Defiant Strike. Which, all right, opponent still scoops it. So another win here, even through my bad plays. And we have... Should keep giving us things. This, these dumb little events that they're running are such scams. All they are is... You have to pay in gold and, and or or coin or gems in just to get skins, and I, I'm a person that just doesn't care about skins. Uh, so the events used to give you gold back if you finish them. Jeez, this one is so good. If uh, if I want to be risky, I think we're gonna see how a one mana uh, one mana keep does here. It's also good too because this is the planes. Any castle uh will come into play untapped. If we don't have it hit a land, though, we're in trouble. But I, I do want to see how a one drop runs out. So opponent's going to gain us some life here. Come on, land. One time. Ah, oh, womp womp. <laughs> we missed it. All right. Give us a land. You can do it. Things like Sarah's Ascendants will be pretty decent um, top decks as well. So this is a Field of Dead, and Field of Dead actually is... I don't know if Field of Dead is something that we need to worry about with this deck. We can just go over top of it. Eventually, the opponent runs out of resource. Ooh, Blast Zone. Yikes. Well, we got the Pride Mate. It came out a turn late. Blast Zone. Blast Zone will kill the Grazers if my opponent does decide to... Now, to go to Charming Prince to get up to 30 life, that means that all the Sarah Ascendants become... Ooh, that one's a good one. 
So, wonder what my opponent runs. Well, let's just do Bugler for it first. See if there's any sort of counter magic. See if there's Blast Zone that's just going to happen. Womp Womp. I think the Lone in Vanguard is actually better than in Passion Orator because of our mana issue here. So, opponent's taken one. Opponent's taken none. But the Blast Zone's gone. And that actually sets my opponent back for Field of Dead and like a Hour of Promise. No, Hour of Promise is still not in the in the form. Oh, there's another win, so... <laughs> Did I probably miss a land drop there, though? So the Grazers... I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But it, it's working pretty good in this historic format. No, it's still all blue decks. Or I guess we've had one feather. Just just uh, blue is overrepresented in this Pioneer, or this historic format. Okay, so... Speaking of Pioneer, rumors are that it's not going to be till 2022 or 2021. Late 2021 or early 2022 before Pioneer is on um, Arena, which is pathetic. It's pathetic at that point. It's a hot format right now. They should be doing everything they can. So Fnac of Arbrand should just... Okay, so... Fire, Firebrand should just be making a... That is a bad play, I think, by my opponent for just attacking in. Yeah, that was a terrible play because it allows us to get the Pride Mate, and now our Pride Mate goes up. My opponent should have should have uh, killed the Sarah's Ascendant rather than attacking in. There you go. Scoop it up. Can't beat Soul Sisters. <laughs> See, this is another problem, too, without, like, uh, tournament, like, coins on the line. If they would have had, like, instead of playing until you just finish it off, they should have had it so there were like you get beat out in a certain amount of time. All right, three losses, you're out. And that way, I can keep playing for some sort of reward. But yeah, it's gonna beat these red decks. And that was a mistake, my opponent not shooting it down. But anyway, going back to to Pioneer on Arena, I would way prefer to play it on Arena than MTGO. I just not a big fan of MTGO. I get how it's it's more like Magic because of the just the yeah, the ability ability to, to to interact is a lot easier on MT Joe, but I don't know. Arena's just Arena's the future. You don't have to pay out twice, basically. So on MT Joe, you have to pay for the cards on MT Joe, and then you have to actually you know pay for them in paper. Arena, you can. Um, ooh, that late line's actually pretty sweet in this format. Arena, you can grind all your cards. So, Fatal Passage was pretty terrible with the Leon of Abundance, but we actually have a pretty terrible hand, too. So, let's see what ends up happening. I think we actually want to go for an, an, an Orator. Start getting some value off our opponents. Uh, casting Creatures. There's one. And, oh, that doesn't actually... Yeah, Stupid Orator sucks. Um, We still want to go... I think we want to go Orator. And then Sarah Ascend it. So we get some life. Get in there for some damage, but I think we're going to die to this lane line. We are an uninteractive deck, and usually these lane line ramp decks just absolutely wreck other uninteractive decks. Like, what I need to draw off the top is probably in a Johnny. And then we need to gain enough life to get us. Um, I mean, our opponent is kind of slow, though. Fauna Shaman. So they're running the Fauna Shaman. All right, that was a great draw with the Pride Mate. Almost there with the life gain. Next turn, we have it. So what is Fauna Shaman going to be able to pitch to go get for... For one, two, three, four, five, six mana. 
And now is that turned on? Yes, it is turned on with the Leafkin. Still an activation for the Fauna Shaman and still no land. So this is kind of like the deck that I built back in the day. It can start to go crazy. If these were just soul sisters, stupid and passion orators. Another fauna. Why are they running another fauna shaman though? Because I think my opponent wants to get out the uh, gives all their creatures plus whatever whatever. So see if it taps down the fauna shaman, discards the fauna shaman. They do have to reveal the creature they're gonna get. So they have three six. Yeah, I don't care about a uh, raise runner at this point. So can't cast both. Is just gaining the three life better? No, we gain three life off of the bugler. So bugler is better than the prince. So I want another send it off the top. We'll take a charming prince. So we have a six six and eight eight. Um that are coming in. Our opponent does have to block one of them, which is significant. So this is getting a plus two, plus two, trample and vigilance. Thing is my opponent's out of cards next turn and they have to tap down the Leafkin Druids. So I don't think I attack in with anything else, just these two. I'm gaining a lot of life as well off the Sarah Ascendant. So my opponent should block, block, block. Really? Okay, that's fine. We're at 36. We have a lot of life. The Enray's Forerunner can be cast. But yeah, it's not going to do a lot is the problem. Going to pump up, pump up, pump up, but that's not 36 life. Yeah, you're dead on the back. Oh, not dead on the back swing. We can actually block the Fauna Shaman, but we don't care. Just no blocks. Eight. They all have Trample too. This Riot Trample Haste. Riot Trample. We can kill the Fauna Shaman to stop Future. Yeah, that's fine. And decided to kill the Militia Bueller. Now that's awesome. Okay. So Sarah Syndic gets dumbed back down. We can't get the Charming Prince up high enough. So let's do another Pride Mate. Gain three life here, I think, rather than scry. Yeah, we're going to gain some life here. I want to get up to the point where a giant's prey but it has to be double blocked. So, has to be double blocked. They lose the pelt collector and the end raiser. And if I attack here, 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 so block, 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 they have to block the pride mate. They can block there, block and block, and then I lose that. This one goes through, though. This one goes through. Yeah, I don't think it's worth it. We're just going to go in there with the pride mate. Block with everything. Yep. So that's fine. Two of them dead. That actually shuts off the Leafkin Druid for now. Another Leyland Abundance, which, you know, that's some significant mana, but there it goes. <laughs> we get this one too. Let's play one more. Deck is just killing it. I love Soul Sisters. I miss Soul Sisters. And it's, it's almost Soul Sisters. I'm not too keen on the Orator, but I don't know if there's anything better. And, and before people suggest running a Johnny's Welcome, no. No. Bad. No. No Johnny's Welcome. It'll be fun with a sideboard for Historic. I'm actually kind of excited for Historic, other than they're adding some... We think they're going to be adding some pretty stupid cards to the format. Um, I was actually surprised with the 20 cards they did add. This is fine. 
Uh, we have the Charming Prince that can to scry us towards finding a, a finisher. And we have we can start off here with just a Soul Warden. And that should be pretty decent with the Leon and Vanguards. All right, Firebrand. See if this opponent actually does the right thing and kills the Soul Warden. They do. Still gained a life there. So here, the Orator's probably the better play. It's going to demand an answer. Instigator. Oh, we would have done well with a Soul Warden there. Unfortunately, missed the land drop. So, but what we're going to do is just both Leon and Vanguards because it's going to gain us some life. And I don't think we make a, a move on our opponent. So Castle Embereth, if they do have a, a War Chief, okay, War Chief is actually not as bad as like a Legion. Unfortunately, missed another draw. So we're going to go Legion Landing here. And then we're going to swing in with everything. And my opponent should want to kill the Impassion Orator, but they're pretty far behind too if they're going to be going for like Siege Game Commanders or a way to pump up their goblins. I'm assuming this is a Goblin Tribal deck. Yeah, even this right now is fine because it puts us in the puts us in the driver's seat. Uh, we can go Charm Prince now and just Scry is fine rather than gain life. There's a Pride Mate and a land, and I think I don't need the land now, and the Pride Mate is great though. So we're in we're in awesome shape versus this aggro red deck. So I guess that one right there could have just um if we didn't go for the scry, it would have been okay. Yeah, so matron was one of the the added cards, correct? Yeah, goblin matron was. So this is a goblin tribal deck. Legion war boss. So now it has to attack, and we eat it with the Charming Prince. And here comes our good old Pride Mate, which is going to get some counters. And I still think we swing in. This puts pressure on our opponent. I don't think they block with anything here. If they do, I'm willing to trade this with any of them. All right, so that's what I thought was going to happen. I'm not too worried about a like a ringleader coming down here. Instigator, no. I mean, look at we'd be we need a soul warden. Ringleader's fine. Only finds a war boss with the ringleader. And that has to attack in and we will just throw it under the pride mate. And another Leon and Vanguard. Wonder what the right play here is. I think just the Bugler is fine. Well, I wonder. Vanguard pumps up my Pride Mate even more. I'm not sure I care. I think I just want to use my mana the best way I can. And again, I'm, I'm willing to make trades with anything here. Uh, because we don't need the vanguards anymore. Our pride mate's big enough. We just got to get through this, this cluster of creatures. And just taking care of creatures, I think, is just better. So there's Siege Gang. And, all right, so this one's good. We have the Vanguard. And we'll do a Pride Mate.
And I still believe we want to come in with everything or close to everything here. So it still puts our opponent kind of low with what they can do. Mayhem Devil's really good here with Siege Gang, but there's only one activation. So I'm going to force off the Siege Gang uh, killing this particular goblin right now by blocking with the lifelink. And it will kill off this pride mate. Got another pride mate though. Unfortunately though, geez, we're just not, not being able to push through these tokens quick enough. Opponent is getting flooded-ish, but Goblin Matron, ugh, it's going to go get another Goblin Matron. Maybe a ringleader. They also have a Legion Warboss in hand. I actually could get ground out here. I mean, this Pride Mate's going to get huge, but this Pride Mate's dead again. So ringleader for a ringleader. And we got to do the same thing. And my opponent's going to do the same thing. So now, <laughs> this is ridiculous. All right, so we can put both out. Slowly getting through here, though. Uh, we'll go hanged executioner. And another Legion's Landing. But our opponent has plenty of mana. And can start chaining off these ringleaders. War Chief was a great draw. Ringleader, though. No mana now to do anything with the... So we'll block here. And Mayhem Devil just might need to be killed. So if I kill the Mayhem Devil, it allows me to attack into the Militia Bugler and the Vanguard. Just like swinging with everything. We could lose some... Or I could just go for the Siege Gang. I think we'll get rid of the Mayhem Devil. Ringleader dead. Matron dead. Double block on the... No, doesn't want to block the Bugler. Does want to double block so we can get rid of the Goblin War Chief. Oh, I'm going to keep the Legion War Boss, huh? So War Chief dead. Still, though, plenty of mana, but we did... That was pretty significant getting rid of... Ooh, Skirk Prospector and then an Instigator. Kind of weird attack. So now I got to keep my stupid pride mate back. Kind of crazy that my opponent's been able to come back from this. I don't want to put the prince out. 
because we can just put out a 1-1 one, one lifelinker. So we're just going to get in here with a 1-1. One, one. Actually, I think scrying is better and putting out a 2-2 because two, two. we need to find like a Johnny. Johnny be really good. Whoa, I'm glad we did that. Can get rid of two lands. All right, so my opponent is, what do they have left with ringleaders and matrons? Not a lot. So hopefully it's not a very significant draw here. The castle Ardenvale can give all their creatures plus two plus one. I'm assuming my opponent's going to start attacking you with most things. All right, so we just get a kill. Oh, that Siege Gang is still very annoying. And... Jeez. Oh, Siege Gang. Siege Gang has two activations, decides not to use either one of them, though. Fanatical Firebrand. Can hit my life total to below. So decides to shoot the Sarah Ascendant and then shoot the Sarah Ascendant again and then again. Womp Womp. So if I attack in with the Pride Maid, it doesn't really do anything. We will play the Castle Arden Vale. Oh, I think I actually lost this one. Because I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a Johnny out. In, oh, not another one. That's actually very significant, these boar bosses. All right, not a land. We got a land. <laughs> Ugh, we lose the goblins. We scraped two to the bottom, too. Okay, our opponent got a land as well. Still, they can't really... Man, I guess killing the Siege Gang would have been the better play instead of the Mayhem Devil. So it's going to force, yep, sacking one of them to kill. There we go. That'll do it. Well, that was nice of you to kill a thing. There goes the Siege Gang.
And now I think my opponent needs to sack yeah to kill another lifelinker. I agree with that play. So goodbye siege gang commander. Should just sack it to the Okay, yep. Now they could just lose a Skirk Prospector uh, fit out. Nope, not worth it. Tack in. Another Legion War boss. Ugh. So there goes the Fanatical Firebrand. Hey, we found... Oh, no! This is Johnny's actually quite weak. Because I'm not up to the life count that I need to be. Huh. I wonder if just making... No, I think it's worth it. Now, if we can get lucky here, the problem is there's this Castle Ardenvale activation and three Legion War Boss activations too. I'm going to lose this, yeah. I don't think there's anything that can come out of this. As the war boss are just going to get out of control. Bugler's probably the best draw I could have drawn, though. Sarah's Ascendant is pretty good, too. I wonder if Charming Prince is just better, though. Because Ascendant, we can get lower. Oh, this is interesting. Ascendant, though, does threaten to finish off the game. I'm going to go Charming Prince. Possibly that's not the right play. Just because I want some more bodies out to kill these. Possibly that was wrong. But if we find another one off this, it's good. Tie Taker and Passion Orator. Huh. The problem is these double activations. I'll lose a militia bugler with these activations. I don't know if I need the Charming Prince anymore. This will do one activation. Yikes. Hanged Executioner can actually get rid of Legion War Boss, but is it worth it just to get the Impassioned Orator out and then get these this Primate up too? Oh, not a goblin matron. Oh, that's horrible. <sighs> now we're back to square ones. So we got our hanged executioner. No, this just gets the this just gets another siege gang. Good 
Good news is there won't be a Castle Embrith activation this turn. Oh, that's so ridiculous. So Siege Gang gets to kill one of them to kill the Hanged Executioner. <laughs> And gets to kill the other spirit. <laughs> so is, is that the last matron? But we find, yes, we find another hanged executioner. So now we're back to square one again. <laughs> this is a crazy game. But I think the, the castle empress is just gonna is gonna take this out. I haven't been able to really generate any one one soldiers. So I have to go after Siege Gang again. I'm actually okay with my opponent actually sacrificing a bunch of things here. The problem is they have double activations with the... I have to block now with the, the Bugler. I think my opponent just has lethal here if they just attack with it, in with everything. So still not net up or net down anything. Mayhem Devil just wins the game here, I think. Because now they have the sacrifice on top of it. Ay, ay, ay. There we go. Now my opponent knows they have lethal. <laughs> Crazy game, though. I think I, I played this pretty wrong, though. We need to find... Should have gone after the Siege Gang with the first one. I mean, the Skirk Prospector allowed for the... So we're going to block on the Legion War Bosses. So, War Boss, War Boss... War boss, and just any of the two. Though we need to go on the prospector. Yeah, this is probably lethal. That's easily twenty three, right? <laughs> cool deck, though. Some clutch draws by both of us to make this game go on and on. Four, eight, twelve, sixteen. Yeah, it's it's way lethal. Way, way, way lethal. <laughs> Stupid second mayhem devil. Ah, that's the problem with not running removal though. Is sometimes these these decks that just go over the top. Just could not, could not. I mean, the, the that third legion war boss just creating those those residual one one tokens, and then not getting another uh, creature early enough to to start some aggression. Possibly should have been attacking in with the big Johnny's pride mate. No, no, because I was I was blocking with it at, anyway. I don't think there's much I could do there. That matron off the top for that that second siege gang was was the game. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, <laughs> kind of fun matchups though. This is how I like magic the most: the big back and forth. 
Um, and then I'll have the, I'll, the list and link in the description, and we'll tinker around with this deck as more cards get put into the historic uh, mix. Kevin with Rogue Deck Builder, thanks for watching.